From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Paradise Island. The Adari Airport in the French Sudan consists of a small runway hacked out of the jungle, a sort of improvised hangar made of bamboo, and a ramshackle hut, imaginatively labeled Office. The site of the Agari Airport constituted the last straw to the already disheartened trio who viewed it hopelessly, as the jitney that had brought them out from the village disappeared down the narrow, rock-strewn road. Well, Trevor, I hope you're satisfied. Now that you've stranded us out here in the wilderness. Oh, there must be someone about somewhere. I don't see any airplanes. Well, there must be one inside that grassy fair, Peter. Come on, let's walk over to the, the office there. There might be someone inside. Oh, yes, and we can have a cup of tea in the restaurant there and get the latest copy of the Tatler at the newsstand. Could I have some comic books? No, there's no newsstand there, Peter. That's your mother's idea of humor. <laughs> Really, Diane, I, I think you might have a little consideration for Peter. I've had too much consideration for everyone. Why I ever agreed to this ridiculous trip is more than I can I'll ever... I'll tell you why you agreed to the trip. Because we're stony broke. And Uncle Reg was the only one to come across with the offer of a job. A fine job on a rubber plantation in the center of nowhere. I don't want to go there, Daddy. I don't want to be in the center of nowhere. I think you'll like it very much, Peter. It's really apt to be very pleasant there. I'm looking forward to it. That's right, Trevor. Lie to your son the way you've always lied to your wife. Oh, all right, Diane. Do have it your way. Well, we'll know soon enough if the place is deserted. I'm frightened. Oh, don't be, Peter, darling. We wouldn't let anything happen to you. I say, someone here. Just a moment and come in. You see, Diane, there's someone here after all. Ah, bonjour, madame et monsieur. Why, you and Oh, oh, no, jean fille. I'm a Frenchman. Well, I've lived in Africa many years. Are you the owner of the airfield here? We oui, owner, pilot, dispatcher, mechanic, also co-pilot, navigator, radio operator. Louis Doré, at your service, monsieur. I see. Have you a plane in which to take us to Lampande, Mr. Doré? My Uncle Ridge has a rubber plantation there. Oh, oui, madame, I have a plane. It is available for charter, but... Uh, <laughs> L'Enfondi, it is a great distance. I should have to charge you, oh, 300 pounds for the trip. 300? Oui. <laughs> but I haven't that much left. Took almost every farthing I had to get this far. Ah, so that is unfortunate, monsieur. Oh, truly, I am sorry. But it would not pay me to make such a long trip for less money. But there isn't any other way to reach L'Enfondi, except overland with a safari. And I couldn't take my wife and child through the jungle. Oui, oh, you are right. And the fuel for my plane is very expensive here. I could not possibly... Look, take man, I left England because I couldn't support my family there. There's a job waiting for me in Lamfondi. But I have to get there by the first of the month. That leaves me only a few days. I have slightly less than 200 pounds. That's all I can offer you. It's frightfully important, Mr. Dory. Oh, well, I have never had any money. I never will ever, I suppose. I am, what you say, too soft. <laughs> Bon, I will accept what you have in return for the journey, monsieur. It's terribly decent of you. I really do appreciate it, old man. No, not at all. But we will have to economize on fuel by crossing over the Gulf of Guinea instead of taking the inland route, which is longer. It will mean crossing a wide expanse of ocean. You have a seaplane, Mr. Dory? No, my small one. I have only a land plane. We shall hope a forced landing is not necessary. For if it were... It would be the end for us all. We'll return to our story in just a moment.
Tarzan was in his seacoast cabin, and he was expecting a visitor at any moment. Since noon, Tarzan had been aware that a native approached on the elephant trail from the south. But since the Gomangani came alone and walked slowly along an open path, it was plain that he came in friendship. Come in. The door isn't locked. Jumbo, Tarzan. Jumbo. Me, Juyo, messenger Mulgo tribe. The Mulgos are in trouble? Sio, all well with tribe. Have great feast, celebration at next moon. Want Tarzan come? You've come hundreds of miles to invite me to a celebration? Nadio, Tarzan, member when he saved tribe, give courage to Ruka, who now is chief. Oh, of course I remember Ruka. And, and the lovely Kao, who became his bride. How are they? Are fine, happy. Day before uh, Juyo leave with message, Kao have fine boy baby. At celebration, baby is named Tarzan. They're naming the baby after me? <laughs> Well, I certainly wouldn't miss that celebration with the world. He's good. I'll uh, pack some meat to take along, and we'll start off. Uh, uh, something wrong? I hear a plane somewhere near here. Julio not hear anything? Well, there is a plane, Julio, and the motor's missing badly. Uh, now Julio hear devil bird. Let's get outside. Perhaps we can signal the pilot not to try a landing here. Looks as though he's going to try to crash land here. He'll be killed. Watch out. Plane crash into Tarzan's cabin. Heading out to sea. There was more than one person in that plane, Julio. Where people go? To their deaths, I'm afraid. There's a large clearing on Paradise Island, but even if the pilot knows about it, the, the chances of their reaching there are one in a million. May spirits take them land of peace. Well, we leave now for celebration, Tarzan. No, no, Julio. I'm, I'm getting in my boat and heading for Paradise Island. I, I doubt that the plane will make it there, but if they do, they'll need help. And I'll hold a celebration if I find even one of them alive. Monsieur Doré's small plane fought valiantly against the strong currents of air that rose from the coast near Tarzan's cabin. But it was a losing battle, and the pilot knew it. The motor was sputtering feebly now, and below the plane, the white-crested waves beckoned the four passengers to a watery grave. Monsieur Doré kept his eyes riveted ahead, unable to face the frightened people who stood accusingly behind him in the small cabin. We're in real trouble, aren't we? Oui, monsieur. I have lost all radio contact, and the motor is almost useless. Then why are you heading out to sea? Wouldn't a forced landing be bad enough on dry land? I'll spend the last hour searching the jungle, madame. There is not an open space large enough. Oh. Are you going to land on the ocean, Mr. Dory? You'd better go back to your seat, Peter. Are you going to land on the water? There is an island shown on my chart. There is a notation of a clearing on it. Can we make it? I do not know, monsieur. Perhaps if my calculations and the chart are both correct. But if you find the island... It appears quite large. But if we continue to lose airspeed, a safe landing will be an impossibility. Are we all going to die, Mummy? Let's go back to our seats, Peter. I'll come with you. Let me help you, Diane. Oh, thank you, Trevor. Trevor, what are you doing? Why are you taking your cord off, Daddy? I'm going to wrap you up in it, Peter. Diane, hand me those blankets over there. If we can get enough padding wrapped around Peter, it may absorb some of the shock. Oh. If we make any sort of landing at all... There's one in the island! Good. There. That ought to do it. Petey boy, you're going to be all right. Crouch low, Diane. Clearing. The clearing is right below. Do we stand a chance? A small one, monsieur. It is in the rebel of the guards. Trevor, what are you doing? You stay as low as you can. I can sort of bend over you and Peter. Oh. It'll mean some sort of protection for you. This is it. The whole down everyone and picking it down. Trevor, I'm sorry for all the things that have stood between us. I do love you. I've always loved you. And I love you, Diane. I love you both. And it's island now, Tarzan. Yes, Julio. We can beach the boat on that sandy strip right ahead. Oh, I never could have reached here as quickly without your help. You're very strong. Julio, strongest man, Mogul tribe. Take it easy, uh, Julio. We don't want to ruin the bottom of this boat on one of those rocks. We'll be needing it. Uh, think Devil Bird come down near clearing? Yeah, we're heading in that direction. If they didn't reach the clearing, we won't find anything but scattered wreckage. Uh, when? When reach clearing... You be quiet. Sneak soft to place Devil Bird come down. 
Well, why should we do that? Maybe enemy. Other times, bad men come jungle in Great Devil Bird. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about that, do you? If anyone survived the crash, they'll greet us with open arms. Trevor, what are you doing with that gun? I'm keeping it handy. This is pretty rugged country. Oh. You can't tell what might happen to us before morning. Oh, don't say things like that. Peter might hear. Oh, I'm sorry, Diane. I thought you said he was asleep. Oh, he is sleeping, but not very soundly. The way he's whimpering is probably having nightmares. Not that I blame him. Oh, if only I could think of something to do. I can't leave you here and go for help. And it's doing no good to stay with the wreckage. It'll certainly never fly again. Oh, what can I do, Diane? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I wish we knew how to set Mr. Doré's leg. It must be giving him terrible pain. It's amazing that he only got a broken leg. And that we came through with nothing more than bruises. What was that? Some sort of animal, I suppose. But the animals may not be the worst enemies we have to face. What do you mean, Trevor? Savages. This island's probably crawling with them. Oh. Well, they'll find we won't give up without a struggle. I'm a pretty good shot. I've made up my mind that if I see anyone coming through those trees at the edge of the clearing, I'll shoot first and ask questions later. <laughs> In just a moment, the exciting conclusion of Paradise Island. Had the sky not been clouded, Trevor and Diane would have seen Paradise Island more clearly. They could have feasted their eyes on the profusion of flowers, the abundance of wild fruit, the gaily colored birds, the blue lagoons and natural waterfalls that gave the island its name. But the tropical moon was hidden behind heavy cumulus clouds, and all they could see were the mysterious shadows that leaped from the edge of the clearing and made Trevor's finger curl nervously about the trigger of his gun. Tarzan and Julio continued to beat their way through the jungle until they reached the clearing's edge. And then, as Tarzan stepped from the fringe of trees, Trevor raised his gun and... See? Julio, tell the enemies. Oh, the bullet just missed me. <laughs> Not know how Tarzan jumped so quick. Now, the moon came out for a split second just before he fired, and I caught a glint from his rifle barrel. We turn around, go back? No, and I'm not risking conversation from this distance either. What we do? Now, you stay here while, while I circle around to the other edge of the clearing. When I give the signal of Molgu, you step from the trees for a moment, but just duck back quickly. I think I can leap from that giant tree over there and disarm whoever fired at us, but I don't want to take any chances. Uh, do you understand? When Tarzan make tribal signal, Julio step from trees. Then step back much quick before men shoot. That's right. You know, that might make a good game. If we didn't run out of players too quickly. I tell you, Diane, I saw the figure of a man. Oh. From this distance, it might have been an animal or, or maybe just your imagination. Well, whatever it was, my shot scared it away. And I'm not putting this gun down until it's broad daylight. Oh, I wish you wouldn't fire unless you have to. I shouldn't like to frighten Peter again. And I don't like to alarm Mr. Doré any more than necessary either. Oh, if only one of us knew how to do something about that. Trevor! Yeah? Over there! There where you fired before this. I see him. <laughs> it's a savage. I can get a good beat on him now, and I'll just. Uh gun down. I won't let go of it. I'll kill my wife and child before I let them get into the hands of savages. Trevor, Trevor, he's a white man. That means no harm. I saw your plane in trouble and I came here to help you. What? You, you came to help us. That's right. The man you just fired at is a native who came with me. I, I was your previous target. Oh, I'm frightfully sorry. I, I've been standing here for hours expecting lions and tigers and savages to... Oh, but there are no lions closer than the mainland, and tigers are unknown in Africa. And Paradise Island is uninhabited except for you. Paradise Island? That's right. You'll find it one of the loveliest spots you've ever seen. You'll you'll enjoy your visit here. Visit? Well, I've got to get to Lamb Fondy by, by tomorrow, I think it is. Oh, you couldn't possibly get there before... Yeah. Oh, one of your parties hurt? Oh, yes, the pilot. He has a broken leg, we think. Oh, let's take a look at it. Uh, do you mind if I move this blanket a bit? I, I'd like to look at your leg. Oh, Jamel. No, you're not dying, but... Oh, this leg does look pretty bad. Well, vous comprenez le français? Vous êtes français? Qui êtes-vous? Je m'appelle Tarzan. But 
I, I'm not French. Oh, oh, I did not know. I... Uh, enough of I... conversation now until tomorrow. Well, I'll, I'll be back in a little while to set oh, your leg. Oh, hurry, hurry, Mr. Tarzan. The pain is excruciating. I'll tend to you as soon as I can cut a piece of wood to use as a splint and locate something to use for bandages. Oh, I'll tear up my slip. Uh, Tarzan, Tarzan, will his leg heal? I got a bad compound fracture. With proper care, I... <coughs> I think it'll mend. If you will just tell us what to do, we'll be happy to give him every care in the world. Mommy, mommy! Oh, what's the matter, Peter? Oh, right, mommy. Oh, a big gorilla just looked at me from the trees over there. Oh. She wants to eat me. Oh, there's nothing over there, darling. <laughs> Mommy's with you. She won't let anything happen to you. Is this your son? Yes. I've got to get him out of this wilderness before he's frightened out of his wits. Oh, but the Frenchman can't be moved for weeks. And I think your son will soon realize his fears are groundless. You know, if I were you, I'd forget about trying to get to Lamfondi and start enjoying the splendors of Paradise Island. That night, by the flickering light of a torch, Tarzan set the leg of Louis Doré. And in the morning, with the help of the powerful Julio, he built a treehouse for the survivors of the plane wreck. As the days blended into weeks, Tarzan taught Peter to swim and to hunt. He showed Trevor how to fish with a wooden spear, how to snare small animals for meat, and how to tease monkeys into throwing coconuts down from the trees. He instructed Diane in the arts of making clothes from hides and bark, of washing things without soap, of cooking on the crude stove he directed in the treehouse. But more than that, he taught them to laugh again. <laughs> Dinner almost ready, darling. Oh, I'm hungry as a bear. <laughs> and almost as woolly. Aren't you ever going to shave? Nope, never again. Nor am I ever going to worry about money or social position or anything else again. Uh, oh, I'd like to stay here on Paradise Island, Diane. How about it? I've been trying to think how to make the suggestion to you. We've never been this happy. It's agreed, then? Uh, but, of course, I, I may have to find a native girl for a wife, and, unless you feed me. Oh, well, everything's just about ready. Call the others, will you, dear? Right. Ahoy down there. Hey, dinner is ready. Yes, and it'll be all gone unless you get up here in a hurry. Oh, come here right up. Hey, Tarzan, my elevator. Get set. Uh, je suis prêt. What? Here goes. <laughs> oh, there, yes, there. Well. Well. <laughs> I come up in the elevator. Wow, you will. <laughs> um, I he fix me a rope from vines. He use a big rock as a counterweight. <laughs> he build a little platform. Voila, an elevator. It's marvelous. Oh. Where are the rest of you? Oh, here they come. Look at Peter, clambering through the trees like a monkey. Let me give you a hand here, Peter. This last step is Oh, pretty... I can make it. Oh, Mommy. Do I have to eat dinner just yet? Well, it's all ready, darling. Oh, Tarzan was just going to take me swimming, and he has to go away soon. Oh, do you have a heavy date, Tarzan? <laughs> Julia's waiting for me on the beach. He's <laughs> located some long pieces of hollow bamboo, and if we can find some waterproof clay to use in the joints, you'll have running water up here by tomorrow. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> oh, can I go swimming now, Mommy? Shall oh, I? I suppose your dinner can wait, but do be careful... We don't want anything to happen that might spoil our paradise. Mommy! Daddy! Look what I found! What is it, Peter, darling? What did you find, son? It's a diamond. What? Tarzan said it was. Look! By Jove, what? it is a diamond. A huge one. Oh, it's worth a fortune. Give it to me, Peter. Why, he'll do no such thing. Give it to me, darling. And just what do you intend to do with it? Well, I'm going back to London. With the money I realized from that stone, I can buy... Oh, no, you don't. I'm taking the diamond. And I'm buying into Uncle Reg's rubber plantation. When I show up with that diamond, he won't care that I'm a few weeks late. Why, within a couple of years, I'll have enough money oh, to... Oh, please don't fight. Just give it to me, Peter. No, I won't. I tell you I... who he is going to give it to... To me. And why you? Well, because my valuable plane was ruined getting ill, and I broke my leg. That is small repayment for everything I have gone through. I'll repay you for your last plane, but I have no intention of seeing you get the diamond. We will see, monsieur. We will see who gets the diamond. Julio 
will still not find Clay, Tarzan. I promised Diane she'd have running water by tomorrow, and I intend to keep my promise. I'll, I'll find some clay before morning. We look all night? I don't think it'll take that long. But look, you, you run back to the camp. You've already done more than your share of the work. Do you not know why he work for white men? All white men but Tarzan bad. I don't think you really believe that, Juyo. If you do, why, why did you help build their treehouse or, or do any of the other helpful things you've done here? Juyo do, cause Tarzan pleased. But they shoot at Tarzan and Juyo first night are bad. Well, you, you go back there and just get to know them a little better, hmm? If there were bad in them, it's certainly disappeared by now. <laughs> The last time, Peter. Are you going to give me that diamond? Or am I going to be forced to take it from you? Uh, I if you what? try to touch Peter, you'll have to deal with me. Diane. Yes, I've got a knife. Tarzan made it out of stone, but it's just as sharp as a steel knife. No, you wouldn't. Oh, wouldn't I? And you needn't look for the gun. It's gone. Gone? And Dory must have taken it when he stalked out of here. But even if he has the ammunition, I don't think he can make it up here again. His leg's still pretty weak. I'm not letting him take the diamond. And I'm not letting you take it, Diane. You have diamond? Julio. Uh, Peter has something he fancies as a diamond, Julio. But of course it's Let just... Let Julio see. You can look at it from there, but don't try to come any closer. There. His diamond. Big diamond. And Julio want. White man not take treasures of Africa. Don't go near that boy, Julio. I'll throw this knife at you. Julio, strongest man. Mordo people. Not afraid, white woman. Oh. Hold on to him, Diana. Oh, get the knife, Julio. I dropped it. Oh, you want to stand still. Yes. You will not move. We. Yes. Oui. It is loaded, and I will use it. I told you I... T Peter! What? Peter, you can't run off Peter, into the jungle at this hour. I will back. get it, boy. Peter. He will not get away with it. Julio, catch, boy. Julio, get diamond. The weeks of jungle training showed in Peter as he scrambled down from the treehouse and sped through the jungle toward the beach. And after him, like crazed animals, came the others. His mother and father, a vengeful Julio, and a hobbling Doré, whose desire for the jewel overcame his lameness. Through the jungle they streaked, their faces masked with anger and greed. Peter reached the beach at last, the others almost at his heels. He was tired now, but ahead of him was a goal. And suddenly the goal came to meet him and to catch him in powerful bronze arms. Peter, what in the world? How did not stop Julio from getting diamonds? It is mine, I tell you. It was my brain that brought us here. Peter discovered it. It's only fair that The boys are minor, and since I'm his father, it's my right. Why are you? Peter, why were they chasing you? They all wanted my diamond, but I wouldn't give it to them. I still have it, Tarzan. A diamond, huh? So that's what it's all about. Please give it to me, Peter. Here you are, Tarzan. Hmm. So this is what transformed all of you into greedy beasts, huh? There! What? The what? Oh, you crazy! Throwing a diamond like that into the ocean. You must be mad. Your actions sicken me. I told Peter that it was a diamond because I thought he'd get pleasure from making believe. Making believe? Yes, it was nothing but a piece of isoquartz, sometimes called fool's diamond. I assure you that it was worthless or I wouldn't have thrown it away. I... Well, Diane, I've played the fool again. I've ruined what might have been lasting happiness. No more than I, Jeff. Let's really learn our lesson this time. Let's see if we can't find a lifetime of paradise here. Will you forgive us, Peter? If you'll promise never to fight with Mummy again. We both promise, Peter. And this time we mean it. Oh, well, yeah, I, I think we all have a few promises to make, huh? I am sorry to... Do you much sorry? Are you coming, Peter? In just a moment, Tarzan will bring me back. Yes, that's right. Go ahead. Don't be too long, Peter. We all need some sleep. Yes, that's right. It, it was a real diamond, wasn't it, Tarzan? Peter, what, what would you say a diamond was? Was? Oh, you mean a definition. Well, I'd say... A diamond was a precious stone of great value. That's a very good definition, Peter. And if throwing that stone out into the ocean where no one can get it restores happiness to everyone on this island, it must be very valuable indeed. We 
We hope you've enjoyed the story of Paradise Island and that you'll remain for a preview of our next exciting story of Tarzan. At first, there are merely stories about the demon who's been terrorizing the village. Then there are visible signs of his nocturnal forays. And at last, there's a glimpse of the creature, scrambling to its underground cave on its eight legs, glaring back with four great eyes. Tarzan is in for the greatest surprise of his life when he uncovers the mystery of the demon and faces the gravest emotional crisis of his life. Included in our cast were Jack Moyle, Eve McVeigh, Barbara Jean Wong, Gray Stafford, and Larry Dobkin. Tarzan, a transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. Listen to our next story, The Demon of Rangu, another thrilling episode of The Lord of the Jungle.